What is up, everybody, and welcome to another Crack a Pack episode. Today, we are opening up a pack of Dark Ascension. This is not something that we get to open up all the time, but there's also not a ton of value in this set, so hopefully we get something cool. There are still a number of really interesting cards in this one, so hopefully we will see what we get, if I can actually get it open. There we go. Uh, as always, we are going to go through this as if it is a draft scenario, so we'll actually hopefully be able to determine what our first round draft pick would be. As such, we will be going through every single card, and our first one here is Gruesome Discovery. It's a sorcery for two and two black. Target player discards two cards, and then this has the ability Morbid, which is unique to this set. Uh, if a creature died this turn, instead that player reveals his or her hand, you choose two cards from it, and then that player discards those cards instead. Uh, this is an okay card. It's not amazing in my opinion. It's a little bit high costed for only discarding two cards. Uh, the, the benchmark discard for like two uh, would be three mana. We see that with Mine Rot and a lot of other uh, like core sets and things like that. It's a very common card. Uh, this is obviously more expensive, but there is that morbid upside. Uh, if a creature did die this turn, you actually get to choose those two cards. So it can be very, very backbreaking in that instance. However, it's a very on the fence card. You're not going to be able to reliably count on a, a creature dying every turn. And so for that reason, it's probably not the best uh, pick in my opinion. I don't know if it's super playable. I guess as filler, I would go for it. But in general, not super exciting. Our second card, Screeching Scab, is a 2-1 for one and a blue. When it enters the battlefield, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Uh, normally, self-mill is not the best strategy in general. However, uh, in this set in particular, there is a lot of flashback, which is basically stuff that you can play from your graveyard. Ideally, we'll see that in the coming cards here. But uh, So self-mill is actually very, very good because you can enable a lot of those cards at different points in the game if you can get them into your graveyard. So I will say self-mill is good. This is not necessarily a reason to be in it, though. Uh, ideally, you'd want the flashback cards before picking up the enablers for it. Uh, and so for that reason, not super excited about this pick. It's definitely not first pick. Uh, Near Heath Stalker is a 4-1 for 4 and a red. It features Undying. So when this dies, uh, if it had no plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, you return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. Uh, very interesting uh, mechanic because it essentially gives you 2 for 1 value for all of your creatures that have it. I really like that. There's a lot of ways that you can like really, really exploit this and just make sure you're dealing tons of damage with all these creatures. Really awesome. Uh, I will say, though, this card dies so easily because it only has one toughness. It's probably not worth it. They can trade off literal any creature that has any amount of power with this with this card. So any one drop, any two drop, anything that's very significantly undervalued in comparison to this is going to be able to trade off with it. So really, it's not that exciting. Uh, it's cool that it comes back, but this is definitely not the, the flagship card for Undying by any means. Uh, Crushing Vines is an instant for two and a green. You get to choose one, so you can destroy target creature with flying or destroy target artifact. Uh, normally, cards like this are too specific to include in your main board, but I actually kind of like this one because you have the ability to choose either a creature with flying or an artifact. You'll probably always have some kind of a target. Uh, generally, I think you're probably going to run into creatures with flying more often, uh, so it makes a lot more sense to probably include it for that reason, but artifacts do come up. Uh, there's a lot of equipments, things like that, that you might want to destroy, so having something like this, especially at instant speed and especially with that flexibility, is actually not bad. Uh, this is not by any means a good first pick, but so far it's actually the best card in my opinion, so we'll keep it to the side and see what we get from here on out. Uh, Erdwall Ripper. Wow, excuse me, uh, is a 2-1 one for 1 and 2 red. <clears throat> it does have haste, so it can swing in right away. And um, Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. Uh, so far, this is definitely uh, the pick. It's a much more aggressive card than anything that we have seen so far. Uh, comes in, hopefully can deal some damage to the opponent right away, and then start pumping up with those 1-1 one, one counters. Uh, the further you get with those 1-1 one, one counters, obviously the easier it's going to be to deal damage because they're going to be less inclined to block something that they can't kill right away. Uh, so I really like this card. Again, it's not amazing. It's still a 2-1 for 3, which is a little bit high, but uh, that ability is going to hopefully get you in for a good bit of damage long term. Uh, Sanctuary Cat is a 1-2 vanilla creature for 1 white. 
Uh, honestly, not a bad one drop. Uh, it's not very exciting. It doesn't do anything, but it is a one, two for one, which is a little bit above average. Uh, so in general, it's fine. It's just an early game play. Uh, generally speaking, you're not going to pick this up unless you're in white and it's late in the pack and there's nothing else to take. The only reason you would really want to play it is for curve consideration. You generally want one to three one drops in your deck. Uh, and something like this can definitely fill out that curve, but in general, not super exciting. Uh, Niblis of the Mist is a 2-1 for 2 and a white. It has flying, and when it enters the battlefield, you can tap target creature. This is much more uh, my speed. Sorry for the light going out right there. Uh, this is much more my speed of creatures. Uh, I really like this. It's a tempo play. It taps down a creature on the opponent's side, uh, which just means you're going to be able to swing in for more attacks more often. I like that a lot. Uh, it is also a 2-1 flyer, so it's going to be able to get in for some damage in the air, which is another great uh, feature. Flying, car flying creatures excuse me, are always fantastic, so you want to pick those up as much as possible. Uh, this so far is definitely the pick. Uh, I don't think it's very close at this point. Uh, Bone to Ash is an instant for 2 and 2 blue. Counter target creature spell and then draw a card. I actually really like this one. Uh, creature spells are obviously going to be the majority of what you see being limited. That tends to be the case. There are some spells matters lists out there, but really in this set that was not the focus. Uh, it was very aristocrat style, uh, aggro style things, at least from my memory. Uh, and so creatures are going to be what you run into. Being able to just straight up counter one and then also replace this card in your hand is fantastic. So I actually like this a lot. I'm going to keep this uh, with the, the flying creature that we've already got because honestly, both of them are pretty good. I'm expecting to see something better later in the pack, but not bad at all. Uh, Rack with Madness is a sorcery for three and a red. Target creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. Uh, so essentially, this is just your average removal spell on most occasions. Uh, obviously, depending on the power toughness ratio, it can be a little bit tricky. But generally speaking, it's just going to be able to pick something off, uh, which is great. Being able to pay four mana for that, that's perfect. Knock something out. I like Bone to Ash a little bit more than this because it counters the spell, which means they're not getting any enter the battlefield triggers or anything like that. Plus, it draws you a card, which means it's replacing itself. It keeps you digging further into your deck. Whereas this is literally just a kill spell. So I would value the Bone to Ash higher uh, than Rack with Madness, but that could just be a style of play. Obviously, if you're in either blue or red, you should take the corresponding card depending on what deck you're in. Uh, our first uncommon here is Faith's Shield. It's an instant for one white. Uh, target permanent you control gains protection from the color of your choice until the end of the turn. And then this also features Fateful Hour. So if you have five or less life, Instead, you and each permanent you control gains protection from the color of your choice until the end of the turn. I don't like cards like this. This is a very much, uh, it's very much a save yourself kind of spell, but it, all it really does is stall the game a little bit. Uh, chances are, if you're playing this, you're losing the game anyway. Uh, and so, unfortunately, playing this only delays that for about a turn. Uh, and generally speaking, the opponent's still going to be able to swing in the next turn or deal damage to you the next turn, finish you off in some way. Stacking your deck full of cards like this doesn't really help you get there. So generally, I would shy away from stuff like this. I feel it's a bit of a trap for new players as well who think that protection is great. And it is in certain instances, don't get me wrong, but on a card like this, not so much. Uh, Lingering Souls. Welp, we're probably going to be taking that. So Lingering Souls is a sorcery for two and a white. Put two 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield. And then as we mentioned before, flashback is featured here. So for one and a black, you can flash this back, which means you can play it from your graveyard and then you exile it from your graveyard. Uh, so essentially this gives you two uses out of one card. Uh, not only does this also give you two for one value just on each playing of this card because you're getting two uh, separate creatures off of just a singular card, uh, but then you also get to play it twice. So you're really, really racking up value with a card like Lingering Souls. We see this do really, really well and constructed in certain instances as well, uh, but it's just a really, really value play. And so being able to have access to this and especially access to it twice, it's absolutely fantastic. Definitely so far the pick in my opinion. Uh, Shattered Perception is our last uncommon. It's a sorcery for two and a red. Uh, discard all cards in your hand, then draw that many cards, and then you can flash this back for five and a red. Uh, I don't think that this is necessarily great and limited. Uh, certainly it has some synergy with other flashback cards. 
discard your hand, you get to play them still again if they do have flashback. That's not bad. There's a little bit of value to be had there, but taking turn three off just to discard your hand, you better be doing something really, really awesome uh, right after this. And if you're not, I don't think it's worth it. So I would shy away from a card like this. This feels much more like a constructed card for me. Uh, in draft, it doesn't seem like it's at its best. Wow, okay, so our rare here is Thalia, Garden of Thraben. This is a very, very good card. It's a 2-1 for 1 and a white uh, legendary creature. First strike, and then non-creature spells cost one more to cast. Uh, interestingly, I would not take this. So it is a very powerful card. We see it a lot in Constructed. Uh, white weenie decks, love this one. But uh, in general... In uh, a limited environment, you're going to be running into, again, a lot more creatures, much less of the non-creature stuff. That's not to say you won't run into non-creature spells. Of course, there are combat tricks, things like that, where this makes that difficult to play around. But in general, I find that it's probably not quite as good as it would be in Constructed. Personally, I would think Lingering Souls would be a little bit higher valued. Uh, I, I still think this is a fantastic card. It's still a 2-1 with First Strike for only 2 with random upside against the opponent stuff. However, uh, you're still going to be running into the problem of you probably will need instants and sorceries as well, or other non-creature spells, and so it could very well hurt you as well. So there's a lot of up and a lot of downside to a card like this, but in general, don't think it's the pick here. Uh, we do have our flip card of Soul Seizure. Uh, it is a 1-3 for 3 and 2 blue with flying. Uh, when it deals combat damage to a player, you can transform it. If you do, attach it to target creature that target uh, that player controls, and then you enchant the creature, and then you control the enchanted creature. So really interesting, similar to something like Control Magic uh, or Mind Control, something like that, which basically just is this flip side of it, where you just control the enchanted creature. Very, very powerful. However, having to deal the damage first and paying five mana for a 1-3 flyer seems very, very difficult to actually pull off, and so I'm not as sold on that. I think for me, it's a pretty easy, honestly, Lingering Souls. A lot of people might disagree with the Thalia uh, assessment, but please let me know in the comment section if you do. I'm happy to have that conversation, and I'm very, very open to being wrong on these. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.